Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I've got a sewing plans video lined up for you. I am lucky enough to be going off to Italy for a few days at the end of June. We're going to Tuscany, sort of in the middle of nowhere in the countryside just north of Pisa, but we're not far from the coast and we're gonna have a car and we'll drive around and hopefully it's gonna be really nice weather. Um, and so my makes at the moment are kind of very much tailored towards that. I just, I've not got very much planned, well, I say that, I've not got very much time left to make it all happen, but it's only a few items, but I've got my holiday in the back of my mind. So the first thing that I would like to make is something that I've mentioned to you guys before, because it is something to go with these trousers. So I showed you in these trousers in one of my recent videos, these trousers are in this amazing viscose linen from So Me Sunshine and um, the pattern is, it's actually the New Look 6446 jumpsuit pattern but I've hacked the pattern to be just a pair of trousers by essentially just adding a waistband and a shorter zip, that's all there is to it, it's really simple and as I mentioned when I told you about these trousers I really would like a matching t-shirt. I'm, I love jumpsuits, I absolutely love jumpsuits and it's one of, they're one of my favourite things to make but they can be a little bit impractical with the whole needing to pee thing and you know. So I thought it would be nice to make a bit of a faux jumpsuit by making a t-shirt and I'm going to make a grain line studio, oh sorry my light is going to make it look really bright, um, a grain line studio scout tee. Now I haven't made just a simple t-shirt before so this will be the first time I give it a go. Um, but yeah, the Greenland Studio Scout tee, it's just a super simple tee, it's just got um, a front piece, back piece, two sleeve pieces and I think a neck band. Um, so hopefully it'll be nice and quick to sew up. I did actually start making this before I went on honeymoon and didn't have time to finish it. Um, I went to India and that's where I wore these for the first time. Um, yeah, so I think a t-shirt in this sort of floaty drapey viscose fabric will be really nice, I hope. So that's the plan for those. And then when I tuck them in, I'll just be a full-blown, bright yellow and flowery crazy person. But I'm hoping it's going to be a good look rather than a, ooh, too much look. But if it turns out that it's a bit much wearing them both together, I can always wear them separately. So this t-shirt will hopefully look really nice just with jeans. Equally, I can wear plainer things with these. But I'm hoping that I'll have the confidence to just go all out and wear them both at the same time. Next on the list is a dress that I have a very hard deadline for. This one absolutely has to be made before we go away because it's actually to wear to be a guest at one of my really close friend's weddings. Um, and it's actually, the wedding is actually the day before we fly to Italy. So um, I got, this is just a, a bit of the fabric. So I have already cut um, this garment out. But would you just look at this fabric? Oh my gosh isn't it just the most stunning thing you've ever seen this fabric um is from fabric godmother and she posted it on her instagram and literally i saw the post liked it and immediately went to the website to buy it and i'm so glad i did because sure enough it sold out really really quickly after that it's an x designer fabric it's a viscose satin and it's <laughs> the website made me laugh because it said it was oh sorry i've gone really bright I think that's going to happen with me holding the fabrics up. Um, but the um, the website said that it was a thousand percent viscose, so I think that must be a hundred percent viscose rather than a thousand percent. But it's just beautifully soft, shiny, and drapey. Just checking my notes to confirm, tell you exactly what's what. So it wasn't cheap. It was seven pounds fifty per half meter, so fifteen pounds a meter. And I needed to get three meters to make sure that I could make what I want to make. So it did cost me 45 pounds for the fabric, which for me is, is a lot. I don't tend, whilst I always try and buy quality fabrics, it's quite unusual for me to buy like three meters of a fabric like that. So it's a little bit of an investment, um, but I'm hoping that it's gonna be really, really worth it. Um, so what I want to make is the bodice, it's going to be a bit of a hack, I'm going to hack two different patterns together. So firstly, I want to tell you about this book. This is this book is called Famous Frocks, The Little Black Dress, and it is basically split up into um, 
sewing patterns that are inspired by different women, like famous women through time. So to tell you who else is in the book, hang on just a second. We have Coco Chanel, Joan Crawford, Ava Gardner, Audrey Hepburn, Grace Kelly, Mary Quant, Liza Minnelli, Angelico Houston, Princess Diana and Kate Moss. So those are the women that are, have inspired the patterns in this book. And I'm going to make the Audrey bodice. So the Audrey dress, the Audrey Hepburn dress, it's inspired by this photo of Audrey Hepburn here. I hope you can see that-ish, maybe. Um, and the, the pattern is a simplified version, I guess. But these are, oh, I hope you're going to be able to see that. That's the line drawings. So I want to make the bodice because I think it's a really nice, simple shape. I really like that it has princess seams. I really like the square, sort of straight across um, neckline with the straps. And then the skirt, I decided not to make the skirt that comes with it. The skirt is sort of like a panelled circle skirt that comes with, or is part of the Audrey pattern from this book. But I have quite a boyish figure, so I've got very small hips, so I prefer to add a bit of extra volume, actually, directly at my hips. So I like something to hit me on my waist and then go out immediately. Whereas a circle skirt tends to slowly, like the volume is more lower down in the skirt. I want the volume at my hips. So, I'm going to use this pattern, which is my all-time favourite pattern so far for dressmaking. It's the Vogue V9075 jumpsuit. I'm sure you've all seen and heard about it because it's um, quite popular on Instagram. And I thought it was going to be really straightforward because I thought I would just make the skirt. But what I love about this pattern is actually the trousers of the jumpsuit, because the trousers of the jumpsuit, which I've made three versions of, by the way, I'll pop some pictures up so you can see, the design detail that I really like about the jumpsuit trousers is these pleats that it has on the front and the back. Um, it's just got a couple of pleats on each side, the front and back, and I just think it, think it gives the most beautiful, dainty detailing and adds a little bit of extra volume to the skirt as well. Nothing too drastic, but I just really, really like it. However, when I got the pattern pieces out to start cutting this out, because I have cut this out already, I realised um, that the skirt is actually just a gathered skirt, and I was really disappointed, because a gathered skirt is lovely, but it was the pleated design details from the trousers that I really wanted. So I've hacked it. I've hacked the trouser pattern pieces to be skirt pattern pieces, and so far it seems like it's worked. I also hacked it to add an extra pleat because I wanted an extra bit of volume. Um, so I will show you how it all comes together when I actually make the skirt. I've already started making the bodice. The skirt is going to be sort of the next bit to tackle. Um, but yeah, I'm, because it's like a flowy loose skirt anyway, as long as it fits me on the waist it shouldn't be a problem. And yeah, I'm hoping that it will just... I want... because this fabric is obviously super drapey, I want that to be shown off in the in the skirt. So the skirt is obviously going to fall fairly straight just because there's so much drape in this fabric but having those pleats at my hips I think will be really flattering. I hope so anyway and give it a bit more movement and a bit more volume and body. Next is a make that I've had on my mind for ages and again it's something I kind of wanted to make for my honeymoon back in April but I just ran out of time. I bought this fabric um, from myfabrics.co.uk or is it .com? myfabrics.co.uk I bought this navy blue viscose linen I bought two meters of it, it's lovely, it's really really soft and it's got lovely drape because it is mo the, the biggest fiber content, like the majority of the fiber content is viscose rather than linen so if I check my notes, because I have to write everything down, it's 70% viscose and 30% linen. I bought two metres of it at £9.95 a metre, so I spent just less than £20. And what I want to do is make a kilo wrap dress. But I'm aware that the kilo wrap dress is a pattern designed for knits. And this is obviously a woven. But I've googled it and lots of people online have made um, woven kilo dresses and obviously they've written on their blog posts about sort of sizing up and 
obviously allowing for the fact that there's not going to be any stretch. So I do think I'd need to make a twirl to make sure that it does fit me properly because jersey's always a bit more forgiving, isn't it, with fit. And yeah, I'm kind of in two minds because part of me really wants to make it in a woven because again, with my slightly boyish figure, I shouldn't call it that. I need to come up with a better term than boyish, don't I? Because it's not the nicest term to say, I've got a bit of a boyish figure. But um, it, with my small hips, I really like the, like the detail on the kilo. It gives a little bit of, like there's quite a bit of fabric on the hip area. I think that would be great to balance me out, give me a bit of extra fabric on my hip. And particularly in a woven, I think it would add even more structure and be that bit more sort of weighty and structured than in a really loose or flimsy jersey. But equally, I don't want it then to be too bulky and actually make me end up looking sort of pear-shaped. And again, I just want to stress, it's not that there's anything wrong with looking like you have a boyish figure or a pear-shaped figure. It's just that I personally like to aspire with my clothes to sort of balance my figure out. It's just personally, I like to try and achieve sort of a balanced figure. But that's not to say you can't absolutely just ignore all those traditional rules and whatever. But yeah, I like to try and balance out my figure. So yeah, I'm not entirely convinced. I'm not sure whether maybe I'll just be biting off a bit more than I can chew and maybe I should, first time I make the pattern, make it in a stretch fabric. And I think I might run out of time to make this before Italy, but I'd still really like to make it this summer anyway, just for being in the UK. I really like that it's a full length, like a maxi length dress. I don't own any maxi dresses, but I re I'm such a wimp. I'm a really cold person. In the UK, our summers are very changeable, and the moment the sun goes behind a cloud, I'm instantly cold. Whereas if I've got my skin a bit more covered, you know, a nice, like, floaty, drapey, vis viscose linen maxi dress will be really breathable when the sun is out from behind a cloud and, you know, shining brightly. But when the sun goes behind a cloud, I won't suddenly be freezing because my legs will be covered up. That's the hope anyway. That's kind of partly why I'm also really excited to make this. We'll see, watch this space. I'll let you know when I've made it. Last but not least, this is the make that I'm probably most excited about, but also apprehensive about. I, before I went on my honeymoon, I decided that I wanted to buy myself some new swimwear. Not much, I just wanted one new piece because I've got a couple of bikinis that I've been wearing for years and years now. Um, but I just want, I just wanted something new basically, so I treated myself to a swimsuit from H&M and it wasn't very expensive and I, I can put a picture of it in here so you can see what it looks like. I really enjoyed wearing it, but my gosh, did it take, so, I had to order so much stuff from ASOS, I ordered so much stuff from H&M, I like scoured the shops and this one swimsuit was all I could find that I liked enough to keep and that fitted me well enough and was flattering enough in the right places. I just, I could not believe how hard I had to work to buy one swimsuit and then, although I did feel really good in it at the time, it does have some flaws, like the lining rolls around to the outside, which is really annoying, like around the top of the back, top of back of my leg, like where my bum is, that's really annoying. And it's really quite flimsy to the point that it can be a little bit clingy around your um, um, female area, shall I say. And you don't want your swimming costume clinging to your lady bits, like that's not ideal. So I said to myself, look, it, it cannot, possibly be that difficult to make one. Like when I think of how difficult it was to traipse around the shops, do multiple orders online just to send it all back, and for it then to not be very good quality or fit anyway, I thought, I'm just, I'm gonna make one. The first thing I did was um, listen, re-listen to the um, Love to Sew podcast episode on making swimwear. I'd listened to it the first time round, but at that point it just wasn't on my radar, it wasn't something that inspired me, like I wasn't inspired to make swimwear I mean. But it was so good listening to that podcast again, I literally was listening to it on the tube on the way to work, and I was pausing it and making notes on my phone, I've now got a note in my phone called Love to Sew Swimwear, and noting down all the recommendations about types of lining, types of elastic, types of fabric, all that good stuff. So I then felt equipped to go off and fabric shop. I'll tell you about the lining first because I'm a bit scared to show you the real fabric. So 
The Love to Sew podcast recommended some using a type of fabric called Power Mesh or Power Net as the lining. So I ordered a sample from Funky Fabrics. They've got loads and loads of stretch fabrics, fabrics that are perfect for active wear, leotards, swimwear. They've got loads. So I ordered some samples. The samples I ordered of the actual swimwear fabric itself didn't end up being quite the right thing because they were... Um, but just the colours were just a bit too bright for me of the particular colours I chose but I ordered this power mesh so this is what it looks like I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to show you but it's a nude colour because I thought that would just be the easiest thing and regardless of what main fabric I end up choosing and you can see it is slightly like sheer and it is literally a, like a netting like a really fine netting um, and it's got a really nice amount of stretch but it's like a sturdy stretch if you know what I mean so it does feel like the kind of fabric that would be great for lining a swimsuit because it feels like it would sort of hold you in and like really sort of grab your body it wasn't it wasn't cheap I have to say in fact let me check how much it was it was 15 pounds a meter and I ordered a meter and a half I only really needed a metre, I'm not quite sure why I ordered a metre a meter and a half, but I guess it's, I'll just have to make another one. Um, but yeah, this is going to be my lining. I have to say, I'm a bit confused as to what just ordinary swimwear lining is, because the pattern that I'm going to use mentions like power mesh in a different context to swimwear lining, but when I searched swimwear lining on a few different fabric websites, I didn't have much luck finding anything that specifically was called swimwear lining. But I'm hoping this stuff will do the job. This is power mesh. Then it came to choosing my main fabric. This is going to be, I'm just going to say, it, it's going to be love it or hate it. I'm really excited about it. I think it will go with my colouring. It's leopard print. Ah! And it's looking really bright in the camera because my light is quite bright because the light's fading outside. I'm filming this after work. This fabric is from Minerva Crafts and it was very kindly gifted to me because this is going to be my first make of the Minerva Crafts blogger network. Um, so when the blog post goes live I will be sure to let you know. Um, but yeah, this is a, a specific swimwear fabric. In fact, let me tell you more. So the price is £16.99 a metre. I They kindly gifted me one and a half metres and um, it's 60 inches wide, it's 83% polyester and 17% elastane. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that, about this one. So this power mesh is 80% poly polyamide, brackets, nylon, and 20% lycra. So this, the stretch in this is 20% lycra, this one's got 17% elastane. And yeah, I'm really excited to use this. It's gonna be quite a statement, but I'm gonna tell you about yeah the actual plan for the pattern I'm going to make. Dun, 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 dun. I am going to make the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe swimsuit. Oh, that's going to be a bit bright, I think. I'm so excited about this swimsuit. As soon as it came out, I've just been saving and saving and saving people's versions of it to my saved items in my um, Instagram because I have like a folder of like dressmaking inspiration. I love it, I'm so excited. I'm gonna make a swimsuit, the full swimsuit. So I'm gonna make view A, which is the low-backed swimsuit. It does have a tie that goes across the back, so it'll give you some extra support, but it does say in the pattern instructions that if you're smaller than a C cup, it, the pattern recommends that you don't necessarily need the tie at the back, because the tie at the back is part of a, um, like a shelf lining. But I'm very small busted, so I don't need a huge amount of support. So my plan is to fully line it. I'm going to probably just literally interline these pieces of fabric and treat it as one. Although the pattern does say it has instructions in it of how to line a swimsuit properly. So if the pattern says something different, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking of hacking it a little bit. I might just make it a little bit more high-legged. Because based on all the images I've seen online, the um, legs are quite, not low, but they're quite sort of, but the sort of swim, it's the sort of shape I think that will really hold you in and cover you up really nicely. But I've got a really long body and quite short legs in comparison to my body. So for me, I'd like to actually elongate my legs a little bit by making it a little bit higher legged. And my plans don't stop there. 
I just have it in my head that I really want to make a frill on the hip. Only a little one because, as I've mentioned, it's not exactly subtle fabric. Um, but I think, again, it's great for my figure. Um, having a little frill on just the very top of the, the highest part of the leg hole will just give a little bit of extra volume to my small hips and will just balance them out with my shoulders a little bit more. I think it will be, hopefully, really flattering. So yeah, if, well, let's just see how it turns out and if I'm brave enough to post pictures of me in my swimsuit on, in my leopard print swimsuit on the internet. Um, well, I definitely will be posting photos, obviously, on the Minerva Crafts blog because that's, that's the deal. They um, gifted me this fabric in exchange for a blog post. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm mad or brave or fiercely fabulous. I'm hoping that it's going to be fiercely fabulous. It might not end up quite that way, but we'll see. I'm hoping I can pull it off. So there you have it. I feel like I've rambled on. Sorry if it's been a bit of a burbly video. I feel like I really have missed filming in my little filming break I had while I was getting married. So now I'm just like, oh, 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 so much to tell Um but yes, those are my makes. Hopefully I will have, I'm hoping I'll have at least three of these things made for my holiday. And the kilo wrap dress might have to wait till afterwards because I just, if I'm gonna make a knit pattern in a woven, I really wanna make sure I don't rush it and I take the time to do it properly. Cause I would hate to waste this beautiful linen, like viscose linen, it's just so nice. So yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos. I often end up posting my finished items earlier on my Instagram. So I'll put my Instagram handle in the description below if you wanna go follow me on there. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.